Hi guys, Olive here. Today I wanted to do a quick video to give you six book recommendations of short books that really pack a punch. These are six books that are under 250 pages each, but that you would never be able to tell were that short when it came to the powerful impact that they had. I wanted to do this video because the Dewey's 24 hour readathon is very, very quickly approaching. And sometimes reading several short, but really compelling novels can really give you momentum in a readathon. The first book I want to talk about is a classic that a lot of people have read, a lot of people love, but I needed to talk about, and that's The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. My edition has 180 pages. If you by some chance have never heard about this book, this is about a young man named Nick Carraway who moves in next door to a multi-millionaire man in his giant mansion named Jay Gatsby. Gatsby has parties all the time in his mansion full of fun and debauchery and lots of illegal drinking. But Gatsby has a lot of skeletons in his closet, including his feelings for Nick's married cousin, Daisy. I read this for the first time in high school. I have since reread it a few times. I absolutely love this. This is probably my favorite classic of all time. Since this one is only 180 pages, it is super easy to blow through, super easy to do many rereadings, and you get more out of each rereading of this book. If you're looking for a short classic, I really don't think you can do any better than The Great Gatsby. The second book is one that I have just recently read, and that is Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. My version of this book is 241 pages, but it is also very small in size. This is a historical fiction novel set in Mexico, but it also is essentially a giant love letter to food. This book is broken down into monthly sections. Each section is given its own seasonal recipe, and then on the opposite page from the ingredients list for that recipe starts the story of this book. The preparation for each of these dishes is woven into the storytelling of a young girl named Tita and her forbidden love with the man who becomes her brother-in-law named Pedro. This book is dramatic. It is passionate. You're following the story of this family throughout decades, the ways in which their lives are affected by the political situation, the ways that they hurt each other, and of course the huge role that food and cooking plays in the lives of all of these characters. This is a book that will quickly pull you through the very short number of pages that it has and will definitely leave you feeling impressed that so much was fit into such a short novel. This wouldn't be one of my videos unless I mentioned something relating to Russia. So I would also like to recommend One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. This edition of the book, which is the Signet Classic edition, has 148 pages, which includes the afterword. The title of this book really says it all. You're following one day in the life of a man called Ivan Denisovich, who happens to be a prisoner at the Gulag. If you do not know what the Gulag is, it was the Russian prisoner and work camp that enemies of the state were sent to after they were arrested to do hard labor for their punishment. People were sent to the Gulag especially frequently during the Stalinist period with the reign of terror that he was imposing. People were often sent to the Gulag for arbitrary reasons based off of information from a source that could be true but often was untrue. The number of years a prisoner served was often an arbitrary number just based on what the people in charge felt like. The conditions in the Gulag were obviously terrible. These were work camps. People often died there. It was obviously a horrific system of how people found themselves in the Gulag. Alexander Solzhenitsyn himself served some time in the Gulag. And so this is essentially an account of what life at the Gulag was like. The main character of this book is sent to the Gulag with a wrongful conviction, as was true for many Soviet people. And this is the story of one day in that prisoner's life. I read this for a Russian history class in college. It was so powerful, so fascinating, really a glimpse into that time period of Russia. This next book is by an author that I really respect, and that is The Wife by Meg Wallitzer. I read this one for the first time last year and have been really interested in doing a reread. The version that I have here is 219 pages. This book starts off on an airplane on its way to Helsinki, Finland. Joe and Joan Castleman are an older married couple who are on their way to Helsinki where Joe will be accepting a very prestigious international literary award for his novels. Joe is a very talented and accomplished writer 
and it is when they are on their way to accept this award that Joan decides she finally wants to leave him. So this book bounces around from the present day in which Joan has decided she wants to leave Joe and flashbacks to the past chronicling their long history together. I was reminded a lot of this book when I first read Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. There are a lot of similar themes touched upon. One of those themes is obviously the concept of the woman behind the man. What all does a woman have to give up in order to support a successful husband? But this book goes even farther than that because this book really touches upon the idea of just how much a woman has to sacrifice in order to be a good wife and a good mother. I was astonished upon my first reading of this book of just how much was packed into these short pages. I was really affected by the reading of this book. I still think about it today. I took the experience of reading this book into my experience of reading Fates and Furies, which ended up being one of my favorite books of last year. I also think that this would be a good place to start with Meg Wallitzer if you're interested to get into some of her works. Not only is it shorter, but I feel like you get a really good sense of her writing style in this book. So of course, I recommend it very highly. The next book I'd like to recommend is On Chessel Beach by Ian McEwan. This version of it has 203 pages. This is a book about a young couple who are newly married in 1962. It takes place over a very short period of time. Right after this couple gets married, something happens. And it's a small something, but it's enough to change their relationship forever. The rest of the book is about the after effects of that incident. This was a really powerful book. It's one of those quietly powerful books that I love so much. I really felt as though there was a conversation in this book about what societal pressures we feel under the thumb of and in what ways we bring that to our personal relationships. It's also just really about heartache and things that we want that may not be able to work out. This book had really beautiful writing. I found it to be very powerful. And I also think that if you were interested in getting into more of Ian McEwan's writing, this would also be a good place to start. The last book I would like to recommend to you is a book called Gazelle by Ricky Ducornet. This edition has 189 pages. This is a book about a young girl living in Cairo in the 1950s with her parents. All of a sudden, her mother, who is a very interesting figure, decides to leave her father. Her father is absolutely devastated when this happens. As a young girl whose mother has just left the family, she is heartbroken. Her father, in order to cope with her mother leaving, decides to start playing war games with some friends of his, including a master perfumer. This is a man who runs his own shop. He sells perfumes. He is an expert in his field. Elizabeth, the young girl, is absolutely entranced by this perfumer. He becomes a mysterious and seductive figure in her life. She is in an especially vulnerable position since she is growing into womanhood and is starting to have some of these feelings and is still coping with the loss of her mother. So it is especially dangerous that she is finding herself so attracted to this man. In the midst of that storytelling, you are getting small sections of Elizabeth as an adult, still living in Cairo, but working as a caretaker for mummies, explaining how this portion of her childhood has affected her as an adult. I found this tiny novel to be breathtaking. It took me completely by surprise. This book is full of heart, but there is a very potent fragrance of the exotic that comes through with the language. I really, really enjoyed this book and I hope more people will pick it up. So those were six novels that I really enjoyed that I can highly recommend to you. These would be great for Dewey's, for trying to meet your Goodreads goal at the end of the year, or just to pick up any time. They are wonderful books and I hope you really enjoy them. If you've read or want to read any of these books, please shoot me a comment down below. I am also reachable on a variety of places in social media and all links will be down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a good day. Bye.